Can a Pokemon game cause someone to commit suicide? Well, according to the Serpent Legend, it can. Hey friends, welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. We here at the channel love gaming creepypastas, so we're trying out a brand new type of video format, where we focus solely on one creepypasta story and give you all the details rather than outlining 10 in one video. So today we're taking a look at one of the scariest Pokemon creepypastas. Come follow me. Let's get to it. The origins of Come Follow Me date back to the release of the original Pokemon games in Japan, Red and Green, back in February of 1996. As the story goes, there was a significant number of deaths that occurred a few days after its release on the 27th, deaths of children between the ages of 10 and 15 primarily. Each of these deaths was thought to have been a suicide, with the victim hanging themselves or jumping from a fatal height. Some cases were more disturbing than others though. Some children had forcibly removed their limbs, bleeding to death. Another case saw a child having stuck their face inside of a hot oven. In another, a kid had choked themselves to death by ramming their fists down their own throat. Other children had been reported to have had near death experiences, having been stopped before killing themselves. When asked why they had tried to hurt themselves, they reacted in shockingly disturbing ways, screaming and clawing at their faces, one even scratching out his own eyes, causing blindness. The only connection between all these cases was that these children in Japan had played Pokemon Red or Green. When the surviving children were presented with the game, they tried to harm themselves. Authorities thought it was strange. But the games didn't affect everyone, only a small demographic of kids. Thousands of children were playing the game, and it had become a huge hit, but there was no mass suicide epidemic. Despite this, the connection to the game was the only lead the police had to go off of. So they visited the programmers. They met with the director of the original games, Satoshi Tajiri, who, when told of the mass deaths, seemed uncomfortable but had no information to give them. Next, they talked to one of the main programmers of the game, Takanori Uta, who explained to them that it was impossible that the games could have caused the deaths, brushing it off as a weird coincidence. The police pressed him for more information, and finally, although begrudgingly, he told them about a rumor that he had heard. According to Takanori, the rumor was that the music that played during the Lavender Town portions of the games had the ability to make some children become ill. There was nothing to back it up, but police believed it was worth looking into. Their next stop was to visit the game's composer. Junishi Masuda. Masuda had heard the rumors as well, but denied it was true. He played the song for the detectives, and of course, nothing happened. No one felt ill. That evening, the detectives were baffled. So they turned to the games themselves. They booted up one of their confiscated copies of Pokemon Red. This is when they noticed something odd. The duration time the saved files on all of the cartridges were quite low, and the player had only a single Pokemon in their inventory and roster. Trying cartridge after cartridge, all of them were similar, low play times and one Pokemon. Whatever was happening to these children happened early on in the game. Still baffled, they returned to their list of programmers in hopes to interview more. To their dismay, they discovered that one of the programmers, a man named Shiro Mira, had committed suicide shortly after the game was released. He had hadn't worked much on the title, and had requested his name not to appear on the credits. Taking this as a lead, they went to his apartment to investigate. At Shiro's apartment, they found notes piled upon notes, with the phrases, do not enter, watch out, and come follow me, written over and over again. Still confused, the police inquired with the programmers about Koji Nisino, a reported friend of Chiro's who had gotten him the gig on the game. This is when they discovered Nisino had locked himself in his apartment since the release of the games. After much persuasion, the police convinced Nisino to talk to them. He told them that Chiro had an interesting idea for the game, and that Takanori allowed Chiro to join the project since Nisino had known him for so long. The detectives started to believe that Chiro had something to do with the death spawning from the game. Nisino had no idea what this plan of Chiro's was, other than it was something he wanted to try for a long time. Finally, Nencino, after a long time of questioning, snapped when the police asked them about the phrase, come follow me. Before the police could stop it from happening, Nencino pulled out a pistol from under his couch, putting the barrel in his mouth. His last words were, don't follow me, before pulling the trigger. Months would pass before the police found another lead. They began to believe that Takanori was right, and that it was all some sort of coincidence, until they received a mysterious letter. It happened out of the blue one day. One of the detectives was walking down the street, and out of nowhere, a frail, sickly looking woman appeared, shoved the letter into his hand, and then immediately disappeared in the crowd of the busy intersection. The letter was written by Chiro. The handwriting matched. It was addressed to Nincino. The letter promised to revolutionize the video game industry with what he had planned, and the writing had become chaotic as it went on. This felt like a confirmation of their suspicions. Now, After receiving the letter, they tracked down one of the only programmers they knew who had worked with Chiro on the game, a man named Sosuke Tamada. The following interview with Tamada had no other witnesses aside from the detectives. The detectives recorded the interview, which started off with them asking how Tamada knew Chiro. Tamada told them that he didn't know him well, despite working with him. They had met up a few times, and he thought 
Tachiro was weak, wanting to do anything to gain recognition. So the police kept pushing, and eventually Tamada slipped after they brought up the suicides. He told the detectives that Chiro did what he told him to do. As Tamada slowly moved towards his apartment window, he told the police that Chiro followed his instructions, and that at the start of the game, he and Chiro had programmed something into the grassy area outside of Pallet Town, after you get your starter Pokemon from Professor Oak. It was rare, but for some players, when they stepped into the tall grass, one could spawn… Dot, dot, dot. He edged closer to the window and the police drew their weapons. Tamada taunted them to shoot him. Then, on the recording of the tape, there was a lot of audio distortion. Screaming could be heard, then laughing from Tamada. And finally, Tamada said the words, come follow me, over and over again. That's when the tape cut. The officers and Tamada were later found dead with the tape still in the recorder. Years later, a detective was assigned to the cold case. He reviewed all the evidence and the tape over and over again. So finally, with no leads, he decided to pop in one of the confiscated cartridges. Upon doing so, he started the game, got his starter from Oak, and went to the tall grass. Nothing. He tried it with a different cartridge. Nothing. Another one, and another one, and another one. Still nothing. Until finally, with one of the cartridges that he tried, he entered the tall grass, and his screen froze. It then went black. Then, text appeared that read, Come follow me, come follow me, come follow me. I miss you, Dad. I miss you, my husband. I miss you so much. He hit the A button to continue while tears flowed down his cheeks. His wife and daughter had died in an accident not long ago. Were they communicating with him? New text appeared. Come follow me, become new again. We want to see you and hold you, and be with you forever and ever and ever and ever. His screen then cut to black as he cried. Then, Oak appeared in the tall grass. A text box appeared with him with Oak's dialogue saying, Come follow me. The detective cracked, shouting no, tossing the game to the floor. But it was too late. The voices of his wife and daughter filled his head, screaming sad and horrible things, calling out for him to come follow them. And that's when the detective found his pistol. And his pistol found his mouth. He pulled the trigger and dropped to the floor dead. The case was never solved. All 104 cartridges that had been confiscated were later burned by another police officer, making sure that not a single one of them would survive. And there we have it, friends. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Come Follow Me? Let us know what you think in those comments below. And do you think something like that could ever really happen with a video game? Give us a shout. Now, for more creepy passes, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and come check out the rest of the videos on Top 10 Gaming. We have a ton of video game creepy passages waiting for you to watch them. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all in the next one.